Are we recording? Are we recording? How am I to know that we are recording? We are. It says it on the top of the screen. Amazing. Okay, cool. So, um, so thank you for joining us. We are starting today our artist development course. We have a bright young lady by the name of Aaliyah. I know her as a singer, songwriter, guitar player. That was a many few years ago, so I'm sure she's progressed. Um, but hello, Aaliyah, how are you? I'm good, how are you, Kevin? I'm good, thank you. I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. I've got my drink here. I want to be outside, uh, but you know, I have to work and stuff. But it's a pleasure working with you and talking to you about arts development. So I'm just going to take you through what we're going to be going through throughout the weeks. Um, all of these will be available on the Keys House YouTube. And then I'll look to chop up some of that information and also put that on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Instagrams as well. So, can you see the screen? I can. Amazing. So, I've lost my mouse. Here we go. Excellent. So, we're going to cover this. The roles. Today, we're doing the roles in the music industry. Then, next week, finding your sound, recording tips, branding, building a social media following, Essential online tools for artists, royalties and music, online distribution, and releasing music. And then once you release your music, what happens then? How do you maintain your momentum? So this course is suitable for pretty much anybody, whether you've never ever played music before, or whether you're five years into making music, you can still gain something from this. Um, because there's quite a few things and there is also a lot that's left out but it's just to kind of get people started so we're going to kick off uh, straight away all right so this is by no means an exhaustive list this is just some of the key components of the roles in the music industry now the reason I put this up is because most people are going to be writers or they're going to be rappers or singers and stuff but if you want to be serious, you want to understand some of the other people you may be working with, what it is they do and their roles and responsibilities. So that when you get to that point, you understand what's required of them and you can hold them to account. Yeah. So a recording artist is what most people will be. Then you have a songwriter. Now the confusion is, and we'll get into this, is that it's not always the same person. Sometimes you have people that write songs and you'll never ever see their face and they'll never be on a video or in an interview. They just love music and writing songs and they want to be in the background. Then also you have the recording artist that also writes their own songs as well. Yeah, so sometimes they're the same person, sometimes they're not. Then you have a composer slash producer will explain the difference, the nuanced difference in that as we get into it. Sound engineer, A&R, all of this stuff will explain, well, I'll explain, so I'll just go through them. Artist manager, tour manager, a DJ, plugger, PR, public relations, booking agent, show promoter, music publisher, and session musician. All right, so let's kick off and let's find out what each of these do. I'll tell you what will be fun, Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. What's a recording artist do? <laughs> recording artist is the main person on the track. So like Beyonce, Taylor Swift, all those kind of people, the, the people recording the song. Amazing, all right, let's see if you're right. Dun, da, da, da. Recording artist oh. is the person that's front and center. They sing rap, they are the final vocals on the song in the recording studio. Look at that, right on point. The recording artist performs and does the interviews in public and usually receive all the credit. Mm -hmm. The recording artist is not always a songwriter, which will affect the royalties that they are entitled to. So we are gonna do a whole entire uh, week on royalties. Um, it can be complicated, but I'm trying to simplify it as much as possible. Royalties are basically once you've released your music and it's playing out there in the world, you're able to receive a percentage of a fund coming back from it, from people playing it. That's what royalties is. So, okay, cool. I've got my money, my upfront money from a record company. However, once my song gets played there, 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 they owe me some money as well. That's what royalties are. Yeah. But we will go into that further. All right. Our second one is a songwriter. Now, songwriter is a person that writes the songs. Often a songwriter is behind the scenes and could be the person we walk past every day without knowing. Yeah. So I know people that are songwriters. I'm like, what do you do for a living? I'm a songwriter. You don't see them go to work or anything like that, but they're actually writing hit songs and they're not famous. And for some people, that's an ideal life. Yeah. They don't want to, because you see, being a recording artist, you have to do a lot. You have a lot of obligations, such as touring. 
interviews, special appearances. Hold on, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's my family. Okay, yeah. And so some people don't want that. They want a very, I'm going to say a standard life. They don't like the traveling and moving around. They want to be in one place. They want to spend time with their family, but they love music. So they could be session musicians, which we'll speak about as well, or songwriters. So depending on what you want, what your skills are, maybe songwriting, maybe some, if you're not talking about young children generally. Mm. Also, the recording artist has to have what they call an X factor. So in terms of appearance and branding and something about them that people are drawn to, that's in addition to the music. So it's not just about the music, it's about, it's something about that, so, about, about that person that will sell to the masses or whoever the audience is that they like. So not everybody who wants to be a recording artist gets there because they don't have that factor. So bear me mind, I have to close my window and sweat because it's hot outside. But there's no, give me one minute. Yeah, kids are playing out there. All right, cool. So where are we? Now here's a little bit of confusion, right? Composer slash producer. Now, back in the day, the producer wasn't actually the person that created the music. The producer was the person that was responsible, it's almost like a manager, responsible for getting the finished product musically done. That was a producer. So the producer would have the telephone numbers and the contacts of all the musicians, the studio engineer, the artist, and now if the artist requires certain things to work, whether it be um, uh, they needed alcohol or whatever it is and stuff like that, the producer have to make sure that everything is there to make sure that the song comes out a hit song. They would be responsible for feeding everybody in the studio. That would be the producer. The composer is a person that actually created the music. Now the producer is the same has the same meaning as the composer or the beat maker. Yeah, so it all comes together. So that's, that's now why I put composer slash producer because it's a slight nuanced difference in what, what happens, or at least time-wise, um, we've come to understand a producer is, also, is basically a composer. All right, you follow, you follow so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent, okay. Sound engineer. What does a sound engineer do, Leo? Um, a sound engineer is the person so you know when you go to the recording studio and you're recording your song it's the person in front of the like, pad and all that stuff and making all the music exactly not necessarily making the music but actually manipulating the music so the sound yeah. engineer is the person that as you said is controlling they control they're the pilot mm -hmm. they're the person that understands the technical aspects of the studio how to get your voice into the computer, onto the track. That's the sound engineer. Yeah, so they need to understand what they plug in, what does what. They have to understand the hardware, which is the physical stuff, the software, which is the programs on the computer. Now, there are four types of sound engineers. Recording sound engineer, and that's obvious, mm -hmm. that's the pre-stage. That's when you, you come to the studio and I record you. That's called pre-production. So you've got recording sound engineer, then you have a mixing sound engineer. Once the song's complete, all the instruments are laid down, all the vocals are laid down. It now needs to be mixed and be leveled. That's the mix engineer. You have a mastering engineer. Mastering is a process of getting your sound to have a sonic quality to it and also raise the volume ready for commercial release. So sometimes there are really, really good mix engineers that can mix your song to a place where it's ready to be commercially released. But there are a lot of stages and some of the stages is actually a good mixer would mix it to a point where it goes to a mastering engineer and they now put that little extra spice and hundreds of thousands on it, yeah? Mm -hmm. So what we did, we got so far, we got a recording engineer, mix engineer and a master engineer. So these are all in studio. Outside of the studio, you have a live engineer and when you're doing a live performance. A live engineer does just that. Whilst you're, whilst you're actually performing, they're making sure that your levels are cool, trying to stop the feedback, trying to make sure you're not too loud or too quiet in comparison to the beat. But this is all live. Yeah, so what I want everybody to know is the engineer is the person that you should be very nice to. 
The engineer is a person who should say, what do you like to drink? Would you like something from the shop? Why is that, Aaliyah? Because they're basically in charge of your whole tracks. You don't want them to, you don't want to get on the bad side of them just in case they, they make it sound too great. They're responsible for making you sound like Beyonce. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line. And if you, if you, if you get on there as like, I'm not putting no effort into this. So they're going to just sound, yeah. So the engineer, the engineer, I've had, I was talking about engineer all that time and then I have up. The engineer is a, a person you need to really, really be nice to. You, need to, you should be nice to everybody. So to reiterate, sound engineer is a person responsible for shaping the sonics of your song. Four main types, recording, captures the sound, voice, instruments, etc. Mixing, EQ and balances all the levels of the sound. Mastering adds the volume and the sonic color to the final mix. And then live maintains a balance of levels during the live performance. All right. So we have A and R. Okay, so A and R stands for artist repertoire, and they're responsible for discovering new talent. So the business model of a record company is a record company is responsible for putting music out. And what they do is they need to find artists that's on the verge or have either have raw talent or on the verge of blowing up they get those artists put a lot of money behind them use all their influential friends to catapult the artists and make a profit of the artists the a and r's the a and r's role is simply to go out and find the artists yeah so the a and r would normally be the person that listens to all the demos checks out new artists on social media checks out the how many followers they got how much engagement they got, if they've got a clear brand to what they do, if they're talented. Um, they would go to talent shows, they would go to various shows, and they would normally be the goal between between the new artist and the record company. Yeah, that's what A&Rs do. So everything we're talking about is just showing young people that there's so many more things you can do in music than just be a rapper or a singer in the studio. So many more things you can do to participate in this sport in this beautiful thing we call music. Artists, right? So I've differentiated different types of, of managers. I've differentiated um, an artist manager to a tour manager. They can be the same person, but there's uh, slight differences. So an artist manager is responsible for the business deals between the artists and the music industry. So what they should do is they should definitely understand the brand of the artist and what deals will be a benefit to them and will not be. So for example, uh, let's look at, uh, who can we take that you guys know? Um, what's her name? Uh, Cardi B, okay. If Cardi B was, if Cardi B's manager was to bring a deal to her where she had to um, do, say, let's say, say something conscious, do something conscious, um, for young young women and stuff like that, where she's not, it's not a very good at, uh, um, example, is it? Leah? I know I'm trying to go, but I'm trying to go there without insulting Cardi B. Basically, I'm saying is that the art, the, the manager must understand who the artist is, so that he he or she can actually sell that artist to whatever they're selling it to, be it to a promoter, be it to a company who wants them to be the face of the company or to endorse a product. The artist, the manager's responsibility is primarily to bring money into the artist and to take care of the artist, yeah? So a good manager, artist manager, will have great networks in the music industry and be able to get the artist opportunities that artists could not get for themselves. For example, you're a singer, songwriter, guitar player. If I was managing you, I should know great venues where it's built for live entertainment and will have an audience that will be into you. And I say, okay, Leah, I've got this potential show, that potential show, that potential show. I've managed to get you this money, this money, this money, this money. And for that, I take 20%. Yeah, it's a standard percentage of the music industry for art, for artist managers, 20%. All right? I don't know if that's gone up or down now, but that back in the day was 20%. Yeah? With us so far, Leah? Yeah, Thank I am. You. All right. Now, a tour manager, what do you think a tour manager does? Manages your tour. A person that just is responsible for the whole tour. 
Exactly. They actually go on tour with you because essentially touring, and I'll speak from experience, can be stressful. There can be a lot of things to do. Um, you know, sometimes there's a language barrier. Sometimes you have to be in certain places by certain times. You need to organize taxis. You need to get plane tickets. You have to appear at radio stations or record, sh record shops, um, signings, all kinds of things. The tour manager makes sure, that, makes sure that all of that happens. The reason it's good to have a tour manager is because you should be putting all your energy as a music art, as an artist, into making sure that you're ready for the show. So you've rested your body and your voice. You know what you're doing and you're gonna give the best you can do to make sure you're earning your money and you're entertaining the fans. Now, if you've got to also communicate with the, um, with the actual promoter, you've got to organize your meal, you've got to organize going to a radio station on top of preparing and rehearsing and trying to get rest because touring is also tired. You've got to do a lot of traveling and crossing timelines. So a tour manager, once artists get up there, and they have the budget for a, tour, a good tour manager, it will be great because a tour manager will actually make you feel like a celebrity. For example, you arrive in another country, you don't actually, you, 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 get, you, you, get, you, get, you get your bags, everybody gets their bags, you wait in an area, the tour manager goes and gets the van, brings it around the front, calls, you said, all right, cool, you come, you get in straight away. From the van, you arrive to the hotel, tour manager says, it's cool, relax, wait goes into the hotel, checks everybody in, gets their room keys, gets the people to come and take their bags, put it in their room, and come and give them the keys. You're in that room, and you go straight to your room. So it, it alleviates a lot of stress and added pressure to an artist to have a tour manager. Same thing when you get to the venue. That can become a head headache as well. Dealing with the building owner or the promoter, which sometimes are the same people, say, okay, we need the, we need the, the fees for artists up front or whatever. So they resp they're responsible for all of that stuff. Yeah. Mm. Now, sometimes the artist manager and the tour manager are the same. All right. Mm. DJ, <clears throat> this jockey, literally, I can't say anything more than they play the music. They play the music. Um, they're responsible for queuing up, playing, and providing the backdrop to the artist's performance. That's if the artist doesn't perform with a live band. Or sometimes it's integrated. I've seen shows where the DJs integrate with a live band for the artist. Yeah. Now, a good DJ will not only have chemistry with the artists, but also be able to play the right music to entertain the crowd before the, before the artist comes on to get the crowd hyped and ready for the artist and potentially after when the artist comes on. So they will know the right songs and a really good DJ will actually study where they're going and they will look to find artists from that country that are big within the same kind of genre of the, of the artist that's performing and throw that into the set as a form of respect to where they're rehearsed, where, wherever, they're, wherever they're playing, whether that be Americas or the Europe's or the Africa's or wherever. They'll find the artist, okay, who's the biggest artist at the moment in Czech Republic that does hip hop or whatever? Cool, all right, let's get one of his songs and we make sure we throw that in the set to show the respect of where we are. So the DJ doesn't just play music, they have to do their homework. And a great DJ will not only know how to play um, on their system, but they will know all systems. So when we're talking about going back to vinyls, they talk about CDJs, and then you talk about um, Serato, and they will know how to play on all those systems, just in case they get to the venue and what they need is not there, but it's another system they can still continue. Yeah. With me? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh, hot in here. All right, plug up. What do you think a plugger does? No idea. <laughs> All right, let's, okay, so plugger. So if you plug, you plug something in. So in the context of music, give it a go. What do you reckon a plugger does? Connects everything together. Pretty much. You're not, you're not far off. So a plugger is, in the context of the music industry, the person that has existing relationships with powerful people in the music industry. So let's take the context of Aaliyah. Aaliyah is singer-songwriter. She's bring, starting to bring music out. She's starting to build a following. It looks like it's going to happen and she's going to be a full-time full musician. 
okay, cool. We need to get our song played on this radio station, that radio station. We need to get it reviewed in this magazine by this writer because that writer is so influential. The plugger knows the DJs personally at those radio stations and knows all the key people in the industry to get your song in the hands. Yeah. So we take your single, uh, as a plugger, we'll take your single, put it in the hands of these people and say, this is the next thing you need to be playing it first. Right? That's their job. Most pluggers, if not all pluggers, work for a fee. So it costs money to employ them to do the, for them to do that. But it can be very worthwhile because it can elevate your musical career to another level. Yeah, so pluggers really, really have, uh, um, they, they, they really have a good job. However, with the advent of music streaming services, the pluggers role is starting to become obsolete because there are direct channels from the artist to the DJs, or nowadays you'll say the playlist curators. So when I say playlist curators, um, playlists on things such as Spotify are becoming the new radio. So it's not so much you want to get on the Kiss FMs and the Choice FMs anymore, which are good, but the, the, the streaming services are huge right now. And getting on certain playlists is really going to elevate you as a musician. So they have curators that will decide whether or not songs will get in. But you need to be able to get to the curators. And with everything, people like this are overwhelmed with submissions. Everybody wants to send in their music. So, oops, so what they do is they have a middle, a middle man or a middle woman. So it's okay, cool. Instead of me going through 3 million songs, in a week, you go through those songs for me and you shortlist what you think is gonna be best to bring it to me because I ain't got time to go for three million, three million songs, yeah? So those are playlist curators. So that's another role, playlist curator. But before the playlist curator is the plugger because if you go through a plugger, that plugger already has a relationship, that plugger knows, um, it's like, how can I say it? The song that that plugger needs to be presenting needs to be of a certain quality to, to maintain the respect of whoever that plugger's giving it to. Yeah, so the plugger shouldn't just be taking any song. The plugger should say, okay, cool. That's not quite ready. You need to go back and change that. You need to work on a different song. If I, if I give this to my people, they're not going to play it. Yeah? So now you know what a plugger does. Yeah? These are mostly radio dealers have you in here too. Okay. Right. Excellent. And let's go back to the A&R. So... The, the, the songs that the pluggers, sorry, the DJs who the song, let me start again, the DJs who the pluggers will be giving the song to, or, or, or they'll be given to people in the music industry, such as A&Rs. The A&Rs listening, are, are listening into certain radio shows because DJs play new artists and they break new artists and they want to listen and say, okay, whoa, Aaliyah, Aaliyah, right, there's a new Aaliyah. I need to get in contact with Aaliyah as an a &R. I need to be the first person that gets her signed. Does that make sense? So all of these different roles we're talking about, they have their own web of relationships with how they work with one another in the music industry. With us so far? Any yeah. questions so far? No. I, I, hope, I, hope, I hope that's a strong no, because we're going to go back over it and you're going to tell us what everything is. Okay. In seven, seven, Ooh, no. okay. Okay. PR, public relations. You ever heard of a PR before? Because it's not just music. We're going to talk about music, PRs and everything. Have you ever heard of that before? No, I've never heard of a PR. Right. PRs for public relations. In a sentence, what PR companies or individuals do is they're responsible for the public vision, the public view, the public perception, the public presentation of a company or in this context, a musical artist, right? So, PR agents usually work on behalf of companies. They're mainly responsible for public image. This involves your brand as a music artist, ensuring that your image, messages and music are always in line with what you stand for. That's basically your brand, right? PR agents are also responsible for successful, challenging, or best case scenario, removing, successfully challenging, or if really good, removing any negative press that may be out there about you. Now in the context of today, Aaliyah, this may be a tweet 
that you have put out a year or two ago that comes back to bite you. Yeah, mm. that happened to Kevin Hart, it's happened to a few people. Um, and that tweet may show you as hateful or intolerant towards an individual or group of people who will then attempt to use that tweet to destroy your reputation. That's the job for a PR company. A PR company or agent needs to come in and they need to contact Twitter and say, can you take that tweet down? And then put out a public statement saying that Kevin Hart has apologized for this and is, um, and is sorry this was back in his day when he was immature and so and so and so and so. And if things don't get better, the PR agent then needs to go to Kevin Hart and say, Kevin Hart, this is not working. You have to come out again today and make a public apology to clean up your public image. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Understand PR? Now, obviously, we're contexting this in music, but this goes for companies as well. So good companies will have a PR department or PR agent that always makes sure that they look good in the public. All right? <clears throat> Booking agent. All in the name. It's an agent that books shows for you. Or books, not just shows. It could be um, signings. So you go and, you know, you turn up at a record shop and it's a meet and greet or um, you go and do a talk somewhere. So a booking agent does that. So it's really responsible for matching a band or a recording artist with a promoter or performing venue. You have relationships as a booking agent with loads and loads and loads of venues and promoters that want artists, and you have loads and loads and loads of artists. And all you do is match them and you take a percentage. Yeah? Okay. Promoter. So a promoter is a person or a team that puts on live performance events or club nights with DJs, all right? So they carry a lot of responsibility because they have the duty to the artist or the DJ and they have a duty to their audience. So they have to make sure the audience is entertained. They have to make sure the artist and the DJ are happy so that they perform to the best of their ability. If they can do that, they can get the right amount of audience in. A promoter can make profit. Here's how it works. I book you as a promoter. So the Leah's really, really big in London, especially in South London. I'm gonna put on an event for her in Brixton. That venue holds 300 people. Leah at the moment has 30,000 followers. Out of those 30,000 followers, 15,000 are from the UK. Out of those 15,000, so I do my numbers. So and so are from London. So there's a potential that this much will come this will be a sold out event. Mm. Aaliyah charges £5,000 for a gig. I need to charge every person £15 or £20 for coming and then I'll have her money for her. I'll be able to pay the venue the security and I will still come away with a profit of £5,000. So a promoter has to understand maths, all the legal att um, attributes of things and they take the biggest risk. Because what's supposed to happen, which doesn't always happen, Leah, is if the promoter goes out and does all of this promotion for you on behalf of you, we got this show over Leah, la -di -da, all pays all this money for all these posters, radio ads, which cost money up front, also has to factor in your fee, the hire of the venue, the hire of security, all of this has to be factored in. If they go away and do all of that, and they don't get the venue filled up, it means they're not getting enough paying customers. That means they've lost money. What they're supposed to do is honor their agreement and pay the artist anyway. The venue, everybody should get paid and they should take the loss. What some sneaky promoters do is they come to the artist and say, I'm really sorry, we didn't fill up, I can only pay you this much, which is wrong. Yeah, so there are some, what they call, some sneaky promoters out there, but you know, there are some great promoters as well. So we understand promoters, yeah? What's supposed to happen now is you have your manager who deals with that side. So you as an artist shouldn't be directly communicating with the promoter. Your, your manager should be doing it. Your manager should be making sure you get your full fee. Right? Boom. Publishing. All right. Now, publishing, once again, is not just exclusive to music. Obviously, you publish books and works and stuff like that. But we're talking about music. So in this context, a music publisher is a person that takes music and registers it with collection agencies. That's one thing they do. The second thing they do is they place music in places where it can make money. That's the simplest way to break it down, all right? 
So in the UK, the main collection agencies for music royalty collection are PRS, standing for Performance Rights Society. Now that's for songwriters and composers. Not that's not for actual artists, unless the artists write their song. Yeah, so PRS is for composers that create the music and for songwriters that write the music. MCPS, Mechanical Copyright Protection Society, same thing, except this one is about stuff that's on a physical product, such as a CD, um, vinyl, or tape going way back in the day. Or if your music gets put into toys as well. Um, there's something else I didn't put in here, and I'm not sure why I didn't put it in here, which is PPL, Phonographic Something Licensing. So PPL, they're responsible for paying royalties to artists now. So if you're an artist and you didn't write your song, there's a song out playing on the radio. You can collect, you can collect royalties on behalf of PPL. We will go into that slightly deeper. Yeah. So that's the music publisher. Um, and a lot of music publishers will see artists coming up, see the audience they already are building, and they will actually give the, uh, the artist an advance. So here you go, Aaliyah, here's five grand to sign with me. It's not actually I'm giving you five grand. It's a, uh, an advance. So an advance is in you need to pay that back. Once you've paid that back, then you can start earning royalties off your own money. Until then, I take all of your royalties until I recoup my five grand. Make sense? Mm -hmm. You sure? Because mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Kind of. All right. So what bit kind of doesn't make sense then? No, I mean, like, it makes sense. I'm just trying to take it all in. Okay. So maybe I'm going a bit fast. Okay. Slow it down. You, you, you create a song, mix mastered, it's ready to go. You want to put it out. Before you put it out, you need to register it with the collection societies so that once you put it out and it starts getting played air, there and everywhere, you can now earn money from it being played because Keys House, is a, Keys House is an example, has to pay a license to PRS in order to play the radio. Reason being is, once they play the radio and all those songs on the radio are played, money should be owed to those artists or those songwriters who created them. And so from the license that Keys House pays to the PRS and all of the other public venues, BBC, everybody has to pay it. Anybody that's a company in a public place that pays music needs to pay this license. So that's where the PRS and the MCPS, that's where they get their money from. And then they distribute the royalties and the percentages according to how many times your song has been played and where it's been played. Yeah, so that's music publishing in a nutshell. All right, I think we're nearly there. Okay, so let's, we, we kind of come full circle and we go back into the context of the, stu of, of the studio and the actual creation of music. So at the beginning, we spoke about um, the engineer, we spoke about the, art, the recording artist, the songwriter. Now the songwriter, for me, is similar to what I'm about to say, which is a session musician. A session musician is a person that doesn't necessarily belong to a band, but they're very, very good at playing a particular instrument. And so they will hire out their services coming to play um, either as a backup in a, in a live show because a person's bass player or drummer or whatever, or in the studio, come and actually play and record on the song. All right? So... Session musician is an experienced instrument player, charges a one-time fee to play music on a song and is not a permanent member of the band. When composing or producing a piece of music, oftentimes synthesized sounds will be used for the original idea. So what we're saying is, um, I'm here, I've literally, as you, look, I'm not even lying to you. Just before, and once, once we finish, I'm going back to composing some music, yeah? I was composing on here and I was playing a saxophone on the keyboard, like as if it's a saxophone. Now, mm -hmm. if I had the budget, what I'd like to do is pay a session musician, saxophonist to come in and play the real thing because there's nothing like the real thing. And that's what session musicians do. So the session musician normally sometimes doesn't really also, doesn't necessarily want to go on tour, doesn't really want to be 
out there like that. They just enjoy music and they like being in the background, just like a songwriter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a session musician is another role that you as a young person, any young person can go and do. Pick an instrument or multiple instruments, become excellent at that instrument. I mean, like you become, a, the instrument is an extension of your body. You can play it with your eyes closed backwards and you're really good at it and then start networking and you can get work as a session musician. Now, when I used to hire session musicians a few years back, it was about 200 pounds to hire them. This was years ago. So I'm pretty sure that's at least 250 or 300 pounds. So you could be earning that a day playing music and still go home and be with your family. So I keep reiterating, there's many, 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 many different roles and many I haven't mentioned here you can do in music apart from being front and center stage and recording artist. yeah? Do you understand what yes. a session musician does? Are you sure? sure? Wonderful. And that brings us to the end. Yeah, that brings us to the end. So what I want to do here is a quick recap. We're going to ask Leah, we're going to do a quick recap of what each one does and if there's any holes to fill in, I will fill in or any corrections, yes? So we're going to go through bit by bit. All right. Are you ready, Aliyah? Oh. You ready? Go on then. Okay, so recording artist, really easy. What's the recording artist do? Recording artist is the person that's front and centre, probably like gets all the like, I want to use the word clout, but like gets all the recognition for everything, even though they might not do everything behind the scenes. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, songwriter. Um, a songwriter is the person that writes all the music. Sometimes um, they are known, sometimes they're not, but they're the person that can, like, just writes all the music. Yeah. Okay, cool. So just a little bit of clarification. Um, we're going to differentiate the music from the actual lyrics in this sense. So, because the next one is the music. Because sometimes they say a composer not only plays the music, but writes the music. So it can be quite confusing. So a songwriter writes the actual song. Okay. Writes the song as in not plays the music. And then the composer does what? The composer producer does what? They write the music. Yeah, so the composer slash producer creates the actual music, all right? Sound engineer. The person that you have to be really nice to because they're gonna make you sound like Beyonce. I like that, okay. What, what, what do they actually do? Um, they like know how to put your voice on the track. They know how to like put everything, basically piece everything together on the track. Like they know how to work the system behind the scenes to make your song sound. Right. Amazing. There, there, are four, there are four, predominantly four types of sound engineer. Anytime you use the word engineer, it just means to manipulate something for your benefit. So it's manipulating sound for the benefit of getting the best out of it. Now, there were four. Can you remember what the four? It looks like you're reading. Have you got, can, can you access the next page? Are you reading the next page or something? No, I can't. I'm okay. looking at you. I'm reading the screen. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Can you nice. remember the four types of sound engineer? Live. Excellent, live. Uh, recording, yeah. yeah. I want to say master. Yes. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Live recording master and... Mix? What you... Yeah, go on. Mix? Mixing, excellent, perfect. Perfect, well done. Really good memory. So in order of how, you actually, how it would actually work would be, first of all, you record it. So for, mm -hmm. just think about the, the order you're gonna create a song. You're gonna record the song first as a record engineer. Once it's completed, you're gonna get it mixed. It's a mix yeah. engineer. Once it's mixed, then you're gonna get it mastered. That's the last touches, ready mm -hmm. to go out for commercial release. And then once it's mixed, finished, mixed, recorded, mixed and mastered, you're gonna go and perform it. That's when you need the live engineer. Yeah, so in that order. Well done. A and R, what do they do? I forgot this one, I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay, A and R is a person that discovers new talent. In one sentence, it's a simple way they discover new talent. What's some of the ways that A and R might discover new talent nowadays? Go to talent shows, go on social media, like just check out all the places that have new and fresh talent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, what's an artist manager responsible for? They're responsible for the artist, like their main problem is the artist, like everything around the artist, all the things they do, like 
talking to people through the artist basically so like if someone was going to talk to the artist they'd go through their manager i'm guessing yeah amazing and so <clears throat> What should, a, what should a manager do? What, what essentially should they be doing for the artists? Like, give me a practical application of what an artist does. So artists come to art to, I, I'm, I say, I want to manage you, Aaliyah, mm -hmm. as, a, as a singer. What would you expect me to do for you? Um, just making sure that, say, like, if I had an interview that you've looked at it, that you've scheduled it, like everything's scheduled. Like doing all their schedules and stuff, making sure everything they need is ready, making sure the places they need to be, the times, just making sure I know what I'm doing, basically. Awesome. And, and, and not forgetting the most, the most important thing I think of all is bring, creating opportunities that the artists cannot create themselves. Getting the artist shows or linking them up with the booking agent or getting them in the right places at the right times, you know, create... Basically, a manager, is, a manager is great to help people manage, but they essentially really should be creating opportunity for that artist that the artist could not create themselves or didn't have the time to do, yeah, and handle all the business aspects. And then a tour manager? A tour manager is a person who manages the whole tour. So, like, everything going on in the tour, like the example you use, like... Um, if you're coming to the hotel, they'd go into the hotel, check you guys in, checking your bags, make sure everything's sorted. Just managing the whole tour because the artist needs to like rest, the rest of their voice, all that stuff and get ready for the tour. Brilliant. Brilliant. All right. DJ? Uh, a DJ is the person that plays the music, like just plays music like on tour. So say, like you said, if we were in Czech Republic, they would do their research to make sure like what music is really big in that country or um, wherever they are. And then they would like play one of those songs to show the appreciation to where they are but just making sure that they know the kind of music they're playing and just getting the vibe there for the beginning of the show the end of the show stuff like that brilliant you can remember this can you remember what a plugger does a plugger is a person that like a person who connects everything to them. so like when i say connect i mean like i'm trying to put it into words the person that has all the like links with all the big people basically so they so say they knew like someone really big from like Capital FM, they're the person that would take my song and give it to them or just or the, the person that knows everyone in the industry, basically. Very good. Okay, PR, public relations. What's a PR agent or company do? Um is this the one where, so say if something like I posted something two years ago on social media, they'd be able to like they they help me get that out of the way like take it down they contact the social media brand all that stuff just to make sure that in the public eye that absolutely. everything i'm doing is right absolutely they're, they're responsible for your public image making sure that your public image is how can i say it, it is beneficial yeah. to what you want it to be in in, in regards to people in t regards to public perception so if you're if you're the prime example is we just had a documentary finish on one of the most famous sports people ever, Michael Jordan. And he had a public image of being a very good, nice guy. That was down to his PR company slash agent, always making sure that whenever Michael Jordan was in a public eye or anything was written about him was complimentary and never was anything like that mentioned some of his shortcomings, yeah? That's like a, a working, a working model. All right, what's a booking agent do? A person that books all your stuff, <laughs> like all your shows, all your like, yeah, interviews, all that kind of stuff. The right. person just... Excellent. Yeah, so a booking agent really is the middle person, or say middleman, the middle person for performers slash artists, DJs, whatever, and venue slash promoters. I want to put shows on and they just marry the two that's what a booking agent does and so now that leads us to a show promoter what does a promoter do a person that promotes your shows everywhere so if you have a show they'll just make basically get it out there so everyone knows it's happening yeah absolutely and they take a lot of risk they take on a lot show promoters take on a whole load of risk financial risk because they have to put money up in advance and they don't necessarily, they can't guarantee they're going to make it back. I mean, I guess the more famous the artist, 
the more guarantees they'll make their money back. For example, if Michael Jackson was still alive and a promoter was to book Michael Jackson, they know for sure that that, that would sell out and they would make their money back, you know? Um, so yeah, so show, show promoter does that. Uh, music publisher. What is music Someone publisher? Music. So like the tracks I have a release. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Sorry, so repeat, I didn't hear what you said. Someone that publishes all the music that you have. Right. Basically, yeah, and takes your song and registers, specifically takes your song and registers, registers it with collection societies or collection agencies. Yeah. So that those agencies can now go and collect royalties, which is basically percentages of money that you get every quarter, so every four times a year, to say, okay, cool, this is how much your song has been played on that radio station, that radio station, that radio and it's giving you that income as a musician to live as a musician on top of money earned from shows and all the other things that you may do. So it's very important to either have a music publisher or to publish, register your music yourself. It's another stream of income, okay? Mm -hmm. And lastly, a session musician. Um, a session musician is someone who is like probably really good at a certain instrument and stuff. So like voice, drums, guitar, all that stuff. Maybe doesn't want to be like on the scene in front. So like if we have, say I was recording something, they'd come to the studio and they'd actually be the person to play and stuff because they're really good at what they do. Awesome. And they, and they charge a one-off fee and they're not uh, due to any royalty. Like normally the contract that's, sign from a session musician is they come they charge their fee that's it they may actually get credits a lot of the time session musicians will get credits they played on this and stuff like that but they won't get any what they call off the back end any royalties off of it normally i'm sure there have been deals in the past where session musicians have negotiated to also get royalties that's not normally what happens because for example if i'm producing something here I've produced it. All I want a session musician to come in is actually to, to play the same thing I've actually produced, but with their instrument. So in reality, I'm the actual creator, creator of that particular melody line. They shouldn't be the benefactor of it. They just come and play it with a real instrument. I give them their money and they say, um, uh, Bob Durant or Sally Durant have a good life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Excellent. So yeah, that's really good. You took in a lot of that. Um, can you just tell us, is there anything there that's new to you that you didn't hear of before that you've learned today? Because obviously there's a lot that you knew. Um, probably mostly plugger. Uh, uh, artist repertoire, um, A&R, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't really know a lot about the DJ, so that helped. Mm -hmm. Um, music publisher and I think that's it yeah those ones are a bit like okay awesome all right that's great so next week we're going to be going over finding your sound and I'll probably to be fair I probably doubled up with recording tips yeah so it'll probably be two in one next week depending on how big it is I might even throw in branding as well all into one session um, but yeah because I know you've been working on music as well that would that would help, help to benefit you um, very, very important recording tips. Whatever studio you're going to use, young people, when you go in, you should understand, first of all, the terminology you use in the studio. It's just easier for you to communicate to the engineer what you need from the engineer. So, you know, re things such as reverb, delay, compression, um, all different things, different terminology that you want to do. You want to track something, you want to double something, you want to ad lib something, you want to harmonize. Understanding these tips and how, how to prepare yourself for a studio session, um, mm. how to even just the psychology of it, all of that stuff would really be helpful as working applications when you're inside of the studio. All right. So, Aliyah, thank you very much. Thank I know you. you've been studying. I know even though it's half term, you've been studying hard and you've jumped straight out of that into this. So, I really appreciate you coming and spending time and, uh, and, and, and just learning and stuff like that. And it shows how serious you are about your musicianship. So, you know, you're always willing to invite more of your friends, but this is going to go onto YouTube so people can see it at their leisure. Um, if you're not already, make sure you follow Keys House at C A I U S. We are a youth organization slash youth club based in Battersea, and we have amazing um, resources, including a professional recording studio that only costs 50 pence per session for young people. 
So it's what they call a no-brainer. Once we are open back, you're welcome. So you're a young person, you don't even need to come from one zip, all right? So thank you once again, Aaliyah. Wishing you a great day, and I will see you next week. Later. Bye. Bye. I don't want to stop this. Thank <laughs> you.